All right, here we go, everybody. In our hour of need, he's among the most reliable sources on the Pittsburgh Steelers. And by the way, WWE too. He graduated first in his class from the Miyagi Do Dojo many moons ago. Also, he is a prominent fan of the world champion Port View Bulldogs under eight little leaguers. Nice. He is the newest member of the Pat McAfee empire. He's our pal, Mark Caboli. What's happening, fella? How are you? By the way, at Mark Caboli is how you track him down on social media. Yes. You need to do that now because a lot of his work is being issued via social media. How are you, Pally? And congratulations on the new gig. Thanks. Been pretty good. Kind of busy, kind of uh, head spinning a little bit. But, uh, you know, Miyagi taught me well, so I'm good. able to deal with it. <laughs> balance balance daniel son but before anything else before we jump in here you have reached a station in life now that sees you ditching the ball cap in favor of the visor this is a bold fashion statement explain yourself what are the advantages of the visor versus the ball um, cap first of all i'm not much of a visor i am doing this from my bedroom and i didn't feel like walking downstairs to get my regular under eight port view bulldog champion hat ah. so this was in the closet from about oh if you, on the side it says fox, fox sports pittsburgh was about seven um eight <laughs> root sports and kbls and stuff uh removed so uh it doesn't fit very well sheck um, so, uh, I just, well, you look, you look dynamite. There's a, there's no arguing that point. A huge, I used to be a big visor guy. Cause you know, let's mm. talk the head, breathe a little bit, Okay, but you know, I'm not Sean Payton like or anything that I think I'll go back to the Port View Bulldogs hat for practice today. Well, listen, if you start to develop as I have the little bit of a flesh yarmulke on the back end there, you don't want to go visor because that's you're going to get the sunburn. You know, it's just, it, it suffers the same consequences uh, that sunburn does on your face or otherwise. All right, listen, let's talk about football for a second, shall we? Very quickly, before we turn to the crisis at hand, which is Russ or Fields, or does it really make a difference and all the rest of it? And are they going to get a wide receiver? Tell me something that is the most significant that you've learned in the last three or so weeks hanging around the black and gold coach Tomlin and all the rest of it that most people aren't talking about that looms as significant positively or negatively for what's going to be with these Steelers. Well, positively, I think it is with the linebacker crew right now. I mean, it looks like they got four really good stars and obviously Watt and Highsmith and they brought on queen and then Landon Roberts very underrated in in the middle and along with Peyton Wilson. So I think they're finally solidified at least the inside part of that that group for a while to come now. So that's huge because you know every, anybody who follows the Steelers know that their inside linebackers have been iffy since the Ryan Shazier incident. They've been looking for it. I mean Queen's a star. Like I said, Roberts is very good. Um, the defense, I mean right now we're all focused on the offense and fields and who's the wide receiver too and Artie Smith and Najee and Warren, but we still got to realize this is a $160 million plus defense that has stars at every level that, you know, if they play even close to their capabilities, going to be a tough team and they're going to be a tough team to score on. And I think they improved a little bit on the outside. They got to stay healthy with their corners. Porter's good. Uh, don't they, Jackson, they brought in from uh, Deontay Johnson. He looks like he's a player, but you know, if you have one little issue, it's maybe the slot corner. But that defense is going to be star. They're they're good, and, and you know, be honest with you too, Sheck. They brought in the punter, Cam Johnston, who right. is just going to help out that defense. So if they can get any semblance of offense, it might be a little bit of a surprise uh, season for the Steelers. But they got to. They got well, I, I mean, your ridiculous range that I saw you lay out recently that they could be really good. They could win. Thir they also yes. they could win 13, but they also could win six games yeah. that that's that's uh, a pretty wide berth. You're allowing for what these what could happen with these years. I do agree with you, though. The one thing that we have not discussed is this is this should be. I said to our mutual pal Chris Carter last week, I think that this defense is in line to be the best that the Steelers have had since 2017. 
Um, he made the point that I hadn't really considered that the versatility of the OLBs may allow for the inside backers to start applying the the pass rush and dropping those OLBs. I think it's going to be great. I think the Jenga piece now, TJ Watt might be one of the five best non-quarterbacks in football, but the depth at that position is greater now than they have at corner. I think Joey Porter Jr. is now the Jenga piece of the defense. As long as he stays healthy, I think the defense is going to be mighty. So now, how do you put enough points on the board with your quarterback <laughs> and what looks like a pretty – decent foundation in terms of running the ball and tight end. And it's starting to take on a vibe built around Arthur Smith. But I mean, do they, are they, are they clear? I know he's the con artist and everybody likes to celebrate and everything. They understand they need a, a, an actually starter level second wide receiver before the season starts. Right. Well, they're not, they're never going to admit that. And they haven't admitted that they've been pretty strict with uh, hey we like what we got right now but of course they're going to say that right now i mean you watched the game against the bills and uh, part of the issue was there was nobody getting open you know there was nobody of those handful of guys of jefferson and miller and watkins and austin that were really separating themselves at all to be able to get open so it, it is an issue but i don't know what you do right now unless you uh, really overpay or at least offer more than what they're offering to the 49ers, which might happen. I mean, right now they got that standing offer on the table, take it or leave it. But if you're coming to, you know, cut down days coming up here in another three or four days, more you get into the season, all of a sudden maybe they th throw an extra piece in there because they really need that. I don't think anybody's going to come free in the free agency or getting cut here in the next week from another team that would be a big upgrade. So they're either going to have to deal with it or offer a little bit more for the 49ers to pull the trigger. But that that's, that's probably glaring need number two. Glaring need number one, in my, my opinion is they got to get good quarterback play. I mean, they don't have to get great. I agree. Quarterback. I want to, I want to talk about that, but yeah. first, just, just to finish with the, with yeah, the I mean, they're going to have, I, I stunned this Tomlin. How stunned is Tomlin? How stunned is Khan and and the Brain Trust right now? They assumed. I have to believe that they they thought that Ayuk would be on the roster or Cortland Sutton or Terry McLaurin or I you know any number of of options out there. They've got to be sort of uh, you know they're they're not I, I, like you say they're not going to concede that to anybody right now. But the assumption was that somebody would be here by now. And now are they looking for a hail mary before the season? With the, like you say, they're not gonna. There's not gonna be suddenly a wide receiver that comes loose on the free agency market. But are they hoping for as people look at their roster and say like, yeah, maybe it's time we move this guy? I mean, that's that's what they. That's their best shot at this point. And like yeah. I say, that's a hail mary. Yes. Yeah, unless Roman Wilson steps up, he hasn't practiced since yeah. he injured his ankle, and he looks like he's making his way back. But how much can you expect from a rookie that's missed three weeks of camp to come in and? be able to uh, do anything out there, at least immediately. So, yeah, it, it's a tough situation. I think they might have underestimated or overestimated the ability of getting IU. Obviously, they were in the mix in April but by when, when the draft was around. But by the time April rolled around, all the free agents were gone anyways. I mean, they could have had Tyler Boyd if they wanted to, but they mm -hmm. didn't want him. I mean – one year, four and a half million in Tennessee. That's pretty. I think you'd take Tyler Boyd right now. Well, let me ask you this: if if they had a time machine, do they go back and undo the Deontay Johnson deal, or did they want so. Deontay Johnson out of the locker room? I don't think so because I think they really wanted to add speed on the corners, and it's very hard to find. I mean, corners are expensive on the free agent market. I mean, if you're getting anybody decent or a somewhat younger experience, you're paying a ton for him. They wanted to get faster over there, and Deontay was going to be gone after this year anyways, and you throw in the you know, the potential ruckus he provides off the field, or well, at least in the locker room, they figured that they were just going to move on from him. So I don't think they would. I, I think they like Jackson right now. But uh, I think if they go back in the time machine, maybe they make bigger plays on any sort of a free agent receiver come middle of March rather than just waiting, hey, something will work out.
Okay, time machine. You and I last caught up on this uh, on this show in May. We bounced back and forth uh, with my questions, this and that, about uh, the state of the Steelers on text message and otherwise. But you know what we talked about at the time when they got Russ was this is before they had Justin Fields. My assumption was, and I still kind of believe this is true. Russ was was uh, in in the Goldilocks way. He wasn't such stiff competition that he was actually going to replace Kenny Pickett but he wasn't so meager that Kenny Pickett wouldn't feel the threat to improve what was weak about his presence and game day and, you know, uh, otherwise in the locker room. I think that still is kind of true. I think that they, it doesn't make any sense from the Steelers point of view, in my opinion, that they don't want Justin Fields to win this gig. So this transition into Russell Wilson, and I'm not overreacting or, reacting at all to preseason because as i've told you endlessly it's a civil war reenactment kabuli it only looks real the conditions look right but it's not the real thing so we can't really judge but we do know from russ you can kind of look at the individual he's just not as bouncy as he was five years or so ago that was a key detail his ability to go off script and bounce the pocket and everything is no longer really there i don't see the virtue of russ i know that he is going to be the starter i i, I the national debate that rolls on about what does Justin Fields have to do there's nothing he can do let's confirm that right there's no chance it is Russ week one period and you can debate it all you want it's still going to be Russ yes yeah I mean so you're a big Justin Fields guy I, didn't, I was I'm not the big I'm not big either I'm not big I'm not I'm not, I'm not bullish on either guy but I do know that Russell Wilson doesn't throw the ball to the tight end never has in his career so what what uh, what he gets yeah. you in that sense? I don't know that is, is he, in that offense. Who's who's better suited to run what Arthur Smith? What we know Arthur Smith wants to do. You know it's Justin Fields. So it's all about vibes created. And I know you're asking about why do people not like Russ? It's there. I like Russ fine. I don't. I, I'm not of the impression that my QB has to be a cool dude that I have mm. to want to hang out with him. I mean, I that that's not essential to me. Um, and uh, you know, I think people point at that because there's the, the what's inauthentic in a way about him isn't he's trying to perpetuate good vibes and everything. But as a for instance, mm. what do you think about Broderick Jones? Hey, he's one of the reasons I signed here in Pittsburgh. <laughs> well, that's I mean, come on, man. I find that humorous, though, don't you? I find that pretty funny. He knows what to say, right? He knew Broderick. No, that's not saying the right thing. That's no, saying no, no, something not, that you think is the right thing to say, not something no, that is no. authentic. He knew Broderick was really t uh, getting tossed under the bus here, at least locally, about his play the other day, and rightfully so. So he went out of his way to uh, commend him and actually throw that in there. So yeah, I mean, it's a glib you can kind look of remark. He looks at uh, you could look at it as being a good teammate too, right? I suppose so. But listen, I would much rather have, the 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 way to look at it is if you have a potentially dominant defense the logic would go that just take care of the ball, scratch yeah. out enough points, win as Tomlin has for the last half decade, win these games 12 to 11, whether you're playing the best team or worst team in the league, just keep scratching it out, knuckleballing it. Mm -hmm. But Russell Wilson is not all that careful with the football himself, one. And two, if you do have this, this really difference-making defense, I can talk myself into Justin Fields making three or four special plays over the course of 60 minutes and that being the difference in victory. I think that's a better path, especially as you get deeper into the season against a higher end competition. I think you're deluding yourself to think that hiding the QB in 2024 is a winning method in the NFL. I just don't see anything that – from Justin Fields that shows me that he would be able to be that guy. I mean, who had the better season last year? Russell Wilson had the better season last year. I mean, you see stuff in training camp. There's nothing that he's really done in the training camp in preseason. Justin Fields just says, okay, this is the guy. You know what he does? He scrambles. I mean, if it's, if it's a called run, he struggles. If he makes the right decision, he struggles. I think the issue is, or not the issue is, I think we see a lot of selective clips on the internet from training camp that shows us what Justin Fields can do. But the problem is, is for every one, there's about six. So you're like, whoa, 
you, first of all, you left that one out. And second of all, that wasn't very good right now. What they want to do is what, don't lose it in the first quarter. Don't lose it in the second quarter. If you got a punt, you got a punt. Um, let's go try to win it in the end. That's their situation right now. And nobody does that, I think, better on the Ross right now than Russell Wilson. I mean, he's not going to fumble the ball. He's not going to just throw it into triple coverage. Maybe he's not going to be able to bust one off for 25 yards when the play breaks down. But how many times does that happen in the NFL? Well, let me here. Here's my pushback to that. And that, that, final thought is what people are talking about. People are reacting, and 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 I get that you and a lot of people point to Russ and say, "Look, he's being he's being the good vibes guy." And why are people so down on him? I don't care about cool or anything else when it comes to rooting for an individual QB or or, or whatever. There are two sides of the Russell Wilson brand at this point. You know, people we understand. You know, the the, the negative, you know, cheesy and whatever has been attached to him. By the way, I think it's uh, I think it's wrong headed that we as a society call people cheesy and corny and hammy when all three foodstuffs are delicious. Why is it negative to be any of those things? I like all three a, of those That's foods. Thanksgiving dinner right there too, right? Well, I don't go ham. I think, ham. That's, I think that's disrespectful to the turkey. It's its only day to shine I, I and we turn our, our nose on its up. Way out. I, I, I know a lot of people are trying to make that push um, to try and say that. But okay, the other side of the Russell Wilson brand is he benefits from – Hey, that guy won a Super Bowl. He was, at, you know, he was at the trigger for those great Seattle Seahawks teams ten years ago, and all of that. And he's married to a celebrity and everything else. So, so there, there is that to it. Take away the name, though, and he, what we're talking about in twenty twenty four, he's, he's Case Keenum. He's got a, he's got a, he's got a hose. He's a backup level quarterback, and the more dynamic option the guy who at least hasn't hit his head on the ceiling in terms of potential yet is is going to be russell wilson's backup to start the season you understand you want empirically you to want football winning. fans that doesn't make sense you want potential or you want winning what what if this team had russell wilson's 28 touchdowns whatever seven interceptions last year where do they go they're better well, than I can't, as i have told you several times now that he benefits from that because he also fumbled away eight times. I mean, 10 fumbles, eight loss fumbles. So now we're talking about 16 turnovers. Is that better than what Justin Fields is known for? A turnover a game over the course of his career? They're the same thing. You know, I'm, right? I'm not really discarding Justin Fields. I think he has the opportunity to be a guy for the future. He has tons of talent. But this year, right now, as we sit, right now as we speak, I think Russell Wilson fits that role that they're looking for today. I'm not saying Russell Wilson fits that role next year at this time. Today, Russell Wilson, next year maybe Justin Fields. I mean, let's remember this when you talk about who's starting or not. If it wasn't for Kenny Pickett throwing a hissy fit, Justin Fields wouldn't be on this team right now. So who do you think Mike Tomlin likes? Well, listen, I absolutely get you. And if and if Kenny Pickett had comported himself differently with that news, I think we'd be having a very similar conversation right now to the one we're having around Justin Fields. And all the laughter when the Eagles were playing a week ago about, oh, now the now Philly fans are learning what we went through the last couple of years with Kenny Pickett. And then the next night, it's like, oh, yeah, we didn't solve our QB situation either. We just swapped out <laughs> one problem for uh, two more problems here. And I got to say, I think you and I, and who else? Bauman. And I, we're, we're right. You know, pat ourselves on the back. You know, we, we, uh, we throw our opinions out. Sometimes they're right. I think Mason Rudolph was ultimately, whether you like it or not, was, you know, if, if you could just talk about a time machine, you go back, maybe you're best off just, just staying with two into 24. <laughs> Is that crazy to say that? No. Well, he had, he, he had, uh, he put it this way. If Russell Wilson wouldn't have signed here, he would still be here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, very interesting. Boy, all that right. Well, the way, there is fact. no time machine. There is no time machine, but we are glad to see that when Kaboli a week ago uh, had a little bit of stuff that uh, Football America rose up and uh, led by Pat McAfee down Plumway, um, uh, reached out and did the did a great thing for Pat McAfee. And for all of his programming, he signed on Mark Caboli. We're happy to see you land in a good spot there, a great spot. 
Um, and we appreciate the time today, Pally. Continued success to you, and let's kibitz once the season gets rolling. Yes, I mean, gotta gotta start keep keep up with the old Cobra Kai there, Sheck. Uh, I don't know. You haven't watched it yet. No, no, I haven't been keeping up. I watched season one of the okay. of the show. But that's, yeah, no well, I, 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 will be coming out next year. Okay, no, all right, I'll, I'll get year. I'll get all I caught up. For you. baby, I think it's going to be awful, but okay. All right, I'm going to go get a uh, I'm going to go get a visor. All right, I'll talk to you soon, fella. Mind? All right, thanks, brother.